Hi everyone, Dave here with Byerly RV in Eureka, Missouri, and today we are out with the brand new camper van from Thor Motor Coach. First, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching if you haven't already done so. If you like RV videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click the bell icon, you'll be notified when we post videos like this. Check out the other videos. We've got great educational videos, other product videos, all kinds of industry insider videos, cool stuff. You can also uh, check us out on Facebook. You'll keep up with the latest news and videos here at Byerly RV. Now. Let's talk about the newest camper van from Thor Motor Coach, the Scope, okay? So we've got a Scope 18M, and I'm making sure I say that because there's an 18T out there, and as we go through this, you guys, there's a few things that are different um, between the 18M and the 18T because of the way they're laid out. We'll talk about those. Um, but newest camper van from Thor, this thing is awesome, you guys. First of all, it's 18 feet long, less than 20 feet long, which means this thing will truly fit into a regular parking spot. Now, it's on the Ram Promaster 1500 chassis. So that gives us a front wheel drive V6 that uses regular 87 octane unleaded gasoline. The tires, the brakes, the oil, the windshield wipers. This is a normal van that you would buy to drive your family around. And the point I'm making there is that your cost of use over the course of this motorhome's life isn't gonna be any more expensive necessarily on the chassis side of things than owning a regular automobile. It doesn't have special tires. It doesn't have really special anything. It's just a Ram 1500 van. You could get one of these to, like I say, drive your family around in. Um, also makes it really, really easy to get it worked on. You know, it's not something that has to go to a specialty chassis shop or anything like that. So um, very, uh, I tell you what, very maneuverable, fun to drive actually, um, and uh, very comfortable, very, very much like vehicles you're used to driving. Uh, that's part of the fun of this. Now, we've worked our way around to the driver's side here because we're gonna talk about the business side of the outside first. Uh, this is where we have things like our hookups and things like that. Um, our fuel fill is actually right here. And then we've got the, right down here, this is our propane fill, okay? So the propane is a tank that's up underneath. So we have a remote fill with a remote shutoff. I've got a place for cable TV to go in. My power cable, my 30 amp detachable power cable is gonna connect right here. There's a little light on this cap, so when I plugged it in, I can see that I'm, I have power. It just helps me diagnose if something's not right. Um, designated sewer hose storage. You know, storage on a anything this small is precious. So you're gonna find designated spots for some things. This is the Truma Combi exhaust port. Guys, we're gonna talk more about the Truma Combi when we go inside. You know, one quick note on that, I don't know if you noticed or not, but it is cold out here today. And when it's cold, you wanna be prepared. You wear enough layers and you have a motorhome that actually has some stuff that'll work. It's really cool. We'll talk about this when we go in. Um, oh, here you go. This, <laughs> this, that's the exhaust pipe for what? the gasoline powered generator on board. 2,800 watt gasoline powered generator using the same gasoline that's in your tank for your engine. Guys, at the timing of this video, so a few things, okay? When you notice when the video was made, everything we're looking at right now obviously is current right now. In our industry, things change rapidly right now. So the fridge we're gonna look at inside, it's really cool. In a year from now, it may have a different fridge in it depending on what they can get, okay? Generators at this moment are not easy to get. These all have regular gasoline generators. It's awesome. Um, as we work with, this is where we fill our water tank. This is our city connection. So if we're at a place where we can connect our hose and leave it connected, we can connect it right here. There is a light right here to aid in the dumping of the gray tank, okay? And uh, when we go in, you'll see the commode. This is actually, this actually has a, uh, cassette toilet in it, um, which is really, really cool, actually. And I'll explain why when we go inside. You might be like, huh? But stick with me on that. Um, so what I have down here is just a standard drain like we see on everything else for uh, to drain my gray tank. Uh, there is a heating pad on that tank and on the fresh tank as well. So I've heated uh, heating pads on my holding tanks in the 18M. The 18T is slightly different in the way it does that. So I do, that is something that is specific. Um, we have a Thule bike rack uh, on the back here. The uh, This is built on, carry two bikes, uh, really, really cool. And of course you see we have a two inch hitch. That's a 3,500 pound rating on the hitch. So real quick, I wanna open this up you guys and just show you what's inside because that cassette, cassette toilet, this is how we'd actually drain that, okay? So I'm gonna open this, open this. And then right here, you guys, you open this up. Oops, two buttons, open that up. This slides out, okay? And it's really cool because, okay, check this out. 
it's like, uh, there it is. It's like going through the airport, right? No big deal. But I can take this up. Here's the cool thing about a cassette toilet, you guys. I don't need a dump station to dump this, okay? I can take this and I could take it into a rest stop. I could dump it into a toilet, okay? Um, so this is something that you, <laughs> you'll have a great conversation as you walk through the place with this too. But anyway, for real though, you don't have to have, you know, an actual dump station to uh, empty that, which is really, really cool, especially when you're gonna be out boondocking and stuff like that, which is what a lot of folks do in a camper van, right? So we buy it for that purpose. We wanna make that, you know, this has features like specifically for that, right? Now. Watch out when you close that bike rack. I'll just warn you now when you buy one of these things. <laughs> All right, this side, so this is our, you know, camp, this is where our campsite is, our picnic table and everything. On this side, I've got an outlet right here. The 18M has an electric awning all the way across. This is really, really cool, really nice. Notice the windows, guys. So they build the scope on the ProMaster window van chassis. I mentioned that again, but I'm just showing you the beautiful windows installed at the factory by Ram. Also, the entry, there's a really cool, and I don't have it set up, sorry, but there's a really cool screen door that goes in this with a little magnetic catch to go in and out so that you can leave this door open while you're camping. Again, the scope, you know, these camper vans are meant really for inside, outside. I mean, it's all kind of one space, inside and outside. It's nice to be able to open this, open the back, um, and really go out and be remote uh, on the roof, there's a solar panel. There's a charge controller. There are AGM batteries in this thing. So we've got extra battery power, a solar panel on the roof, and, a, and it'll charge all the time that the sun's shining on it. So we've got a gasoline generator. We've got a solar panel. We've got extra batteries. We've got propane on board. We've got heated holding tanks. I mean, this thing is set up, guys, to go out and really be as off-grid as you want to be or be just as comfortable when you back into a nice campsite. So let's go inside and check it out. All right, guys, inside the 18M, we have a lot to talk about, so stick with me. There is so much cool stuff in this new camper van. Now, we'll start right here as we walk in. We have a, well, it's a, it's a tablet is what it is that controls everything from my lighting, my tank monitoring, my generator on and off. I can do the, I do the awning from here. I do my power vent. So there is a um, high speed vent. It's on the ceiling. Uh, you'll see that in a few minutes here, but I can control that from here where I can open and close that and turn that vent on as well. Um, you know, one of the things about when I'm boondocking and stuff, maybe I don't want to be running my generator and running my air conditioner all the time. Um, I can open my windows and there's a nice vent in the ceiling that'll draw the air in and up. Um, also, right above that, okay, is the Truma Combi controls here, guys. Um, this is something that we will certainly be training you on uh, when you come in to pick up something like this. The Truma Combi is almost deserves its own video in itself and everything that it does, but allow me to try to explain here what we've got in here. Um, in some of the bigger motorhomes that are out there, big, huge diesel pusher motorhomes, they have an aqua hot system, which is like a boiler system to do their furnace and to do their hot water. Well, the Truma Combi is like a miniature version of that for things like camper vans, like what we're in. So this Truma Combi gives me my heat, like my furnace, and gives me hot water. It does this using propane, okay? And the way it works is, um, it's like a cylinder within a cylinder. In other words, it has a water jacket on it that holds 2.7 gallons of water. And I use the propane to heat up that 2.7 gallons of water in the water jacket. And down the center of that is a tube that I blow air through and the warm water heats the air as it goes through and warms the air and that's where I get the warm air to blow around in here to heat the coach. And I say it that way because the way the combi system works, once that water is warmed up in there, okay, and it, 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 it stays warm, it retains that heat, and the fan that blows the air through there and out through my vents, my vents are small vents in here. Um, well, there's a bigger one back there, but they, they, the vents, if you've ever had a regular camper, when you turn on the furnace, it, it's loud, it, it blows like a hairdryer type of thing. I mean, it, it blows hard and it's loud and it blows a lot of air. This system here is quiet. You can barely hear it running. There's a little fan that just sits in there and kind of constantly turns and moves air. So we have a constant circulation of air and a constant warming of the air and it does this in a very, very energy efficient manner. 
Um, the other thing is, is that a regular furnace basically burns the air. I mean, you've got a flame and you've got air and it dries it out. If you've ever woke up in the morning, I mean, your lips can be chapped and things like that in a camper because the furnace dry the air out so much. This way of doing this does not dry out the air as bad also. So you won't have all those, it's just a great little thing. Now, I just talked all about how it heats the air and heats the inside of the coach and operates as your furnace, it also operates as your water heater. So once that water is already warmed up in there, I've got water, I can wash hands, I've got hot water on demand anytime I want. And there's a couple other settings there so that if I'm gonna take a shower, you put it into a mode and allow it to heat up, it's gonna heat it up kind of extra hot, and then you don't have to mix as much cold in, and you can shower and everything in here. So very, very cool, you guys. The Truma Combi system, you'll find it in this and other small camper vans. Um, very efficient, very awesome, I mean, if you go on some of the online forums, it's like they're having contests to see how cold they can go out and camp in these things. So I'm not gonna necessarily advocate doing that, but it's really actually really cool. And I have personally been in a unit with a Truma Combi uh, when it was cold outside, and it is absolutely amazing and uses very, very little propane. Very, very, very cool. Um, speaking of very cool, you know, I talked about earlier about the availability of things and how things can change and things like that. So right now, and I say it that way, right now, there is about the coolest refrigerator I've ever seen in a camper. This is an Italian refrigerator. It is 12 volt. It is stainless steel. It's got a very good latching mechanism here. I wish you guys could feel how heavy this door is. You could probably hear that, okay? awesome refrigerator in this thing. Right above that, I've got a nice two burner stove. You know, I've camped in a lot of stuff that had three burner stoves and I've never used all three burners at one time. Um, got auto ignition on it, very, very nice. Um, I've got extra counter space up here. So when I am gonna maybe prepare meals and things like that, I've got a little bit extra space. It's always nice, but then it just goes right away, right? Um, Things, but I, there's an outlet right here for me to use. There is the main battery disconnect right here, guys, when you're gonna put the coach away and not use it and not be plugged in, you wanna disconnect your battery. It's nice and easy to get to. Um, the uh, cabinetry in here is just beautiful, guys. Uh, this is a Euro style cabinet. It's a laminate cabinet. It's strong, it's light, and it looks really, really good. Um, up here, I wanna go ahead and highlight this particular compartment because you can see the charge controller in there. Earlier I mentioned that there is a solar panel on the roof. Um, this device here is managing that charge. So in other words, this is monitoring my battery. And if the battery needs a charge, which it does right now, it's gonna allow that power into the battery to charge. But once the battery is full, it's gonna stop. It's not gonna overcharge it and things like that. That's what a charge controller does. That's part of a solar system. Um, also up in this compartment, there was a on off switch for the inverter. So I have outlets that will run on an inverter. So that means I can have some electricity without having to run my generator. It's a thousand watt inverter on these and you turn it on and off right up there. Um, there's also some USB ports in there. There's USB ports all over the place, guys. Um, outlets, USBs, you know, USBs work on batteries. So, and so many devices nowadays are USB. Uh, so, you know, you charge just about everything on USB nowadays. Um, nice little stainless steel recess sink, nice little extra piece of counter right here. Uh, you'll see a tablet holder. So this is kind of cool. These guys, I mean, they, they know how we do this, you know, and I, I watch, I can stream most of the services I pay for through a tablet. So I don't need to have a TV. I don't need to bring a TV. I could also mount a TV right here. There's an HDMI plug here. There is a corresponding HDMI plug in this cabinet right here. And a there is an outlet in here. So I could put, say, a DVD player or a device in here, plug it into the HDMI, it would come out here and I could plug it into whatever my device, whether it's a tablet, a TV, or whatever I wanted to put right here. Um, drawers, one, two, three, four drawers, very nice. This, uh, I mean, heck, this is cool. Uh, nice little stainless microwave, um, just what we need in here. Everything's gonna be a little bit smaller, of course, because it's a smaller coach, which is why it can fit into whatever parking spot just about you want, right? Bathroom. Now guys, this right here, this is something else here. So one of the things that's usually, <laughs> these small coaches can be very challenged on is the wet bath, I call it. And so what, what is a wet bath? So a wet bath has, I've got my commode and I've got in here a shower head and I'm standing in a shower pan with a drain, okay? So a wet bath, a lot, I, I, would, I could pull this little, curtain around, stand in here, shower, it would all go right into this little drain and out. I call it a self-cleaning bathroom, I love it. Um, there's a little sink that actually comes out of the wall. And then I mentioned earlier, we looked outside, this is that cassette toilet. So it's gonna operate as a normal toilet basically in here with a fill use flush, just like we do in most of our campers. And then we 
looked earlier at how we drain this, knowing that we don't have to have a full dump station to empty this, uh, which again lends itself to just boondocking and, and, and things like that. There's, you know, this is this is common in a um, when you've got the full bathroom back in the back, quite a bit of storage back here. So I've got cabinet storage back here with hanging storage in it, and I've got drawers down here as well. Um, Nice little pocket doors right here. These are awesome, you guys. Allows you to just close this off so somebody can have their privacy back here. This is, you know, one of the benefits of a coach like this um, and any of these little camper vans is that this is so useful for not just camping, right? I mean, I've got my own little executive bathroom anywhere I want to go, you know? I just think that's great. We can go out and go camping for the day. During the last two years, um, Everything's been a little challenging going out to eat and things like that, right? So uh, my wife and I will take a little boat home like this, go to the restaurant, pull up outside. They'll bring the food out. Well, we've got the table and everything set up right out here. So as we move up here, you'll see that this has a little table right here on this little couch. Um, this is what I mean. We can, this is a cool little table. Notice that the passenger seat flips around. I can move my table like this. We could both use this table. The couch, nice custom cushions on this. Okay, I got cup holders even. Um, there's is a either seat beltable positions right here. And this got a little, I mean, every little bit of space is precious, but this has a pantry, you guys. I've got pantry space. I've got more drawer space right here. Um, tons of storage. I say tons of storage. That's a relative term. <laughs> tons of storage for an 18 foot motorhome. But for real, you guys, I got cabinets all the way across the top. Um, we mentioned the windows outside, you know, when we talked about outside, but that window van chassis gives us great windows. I've got nice pull down privacy shades, okay? These are not just the cheap little shades, those are good ones. Um, little pockets for things everywhere right now. Of course, this is going to convert down into a bed. So let's convert it down into a bed. Voila, we have a bed. Guys, this is awesome. This is a two person bed for real. It is a little over six feet long so I can lay on it and not hang off of it. Um, they actually custom cut the cushions here to fit. So, you know, one of the complaints I think about convertible beds that I hear a lot is that it's not, it doesn't make a good flat bed. You know, yeah, it's a jackknife sofa and yeah, you can sleep on it if the alternative is outside on the cold hard ground, sure. But this is actually a nice flat, comfortable bed and easy to put together. Um, so, you know, the cool thing is, is that, you know, not only can you park it anywhere, you can camp it anywhere too. You know, I always thought it'd be kind of fun to pull up somewhere and pay for a parking meter overnight and that's my campsite. I know that that sounds crazy, but that's kind of, you can do that kind of stuff with this, you guys. Um, overnighting and things like, you know, uh, rest stops and and, uh, and maybe truck stops and things like that. Um, I've, I've done that recently and actually uh, felt safe and had a lot of fun doing it. There's certain truck stops out there that actually have designated spots they want you to do this, you know, um, which, is, which is just really, really cool. You know, if you guys have been maybe RVing for years, maybe you've had trailers, fifth wheels, other motorhomes, van camping is just a whole different way to do that. It's so much fun. You can really set out with no destination whatsoever and no plan and just kind of do whatever you want and have a lot of fun. I've been able to use a camper van in ways that I would never have been able to use a travel trailer or anything else I've ever owned. It's certainly, even if you already have, this is like, you could have this as a second RV. I know that sounds crazy, but that's my new thing is why not have two, you know, one for one purpose and one for another. But seriously, you guys, this is something that can be used for everything from camping to going out to dinner for the evening to going to the park or whatever the case may be. Again, if you've been doing this for years and you want to mix it up and maybe do something a little bit different, grab one of these guys. This isn't much more expensive than a nice SUV. Okay. And it'll fit your driveway and depending on your homeowners association you may or may not be able to get away with it but guys this is something that you could even drive it as a daily driver if you wanted to but my point there is the flexibility of a camper van is something that's really just now being realized guys check it out check out our other videos on our youtube channel check out our instructional videos check out industry insider videos and things like that make sure you have subscribed if you like this video you should be subscribed by now because we're going to put out more it's going to be great check us out on facebook and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time